Laparoscopic Principles and Tips Part 3. We're just going to talk about some of the general laparoscopic principles. So when you're doing a laparoscopic case, you are working with a lever. The body, the patient's abdomen, or wherever that trocar and instruments are going through is going to act as a fulcrum. And your instruments are going to be on a lever, just like a seesaw. The opposite of what you do, what you do on the outside is going to be the opposite translation on the inside. So you have to get used to that action. Now, when you have an open procedure and you have organs in the way, you can just pack them out of the way. You don't have that luxury when you're doing laparoscopic procedures. So one of the surgeons I work with says that gravity is your retractor, and he's right. Whichever way is going to make those organs move out of your way is the way that body's gonna be tilted, depending on what the procedure is. Reverse Trendelenburg, tilted to the left, Trendelenburg itself, whatever. You, you're going to use gravity to get things out of the way so you can see what you need to see. Something important to remember is that when you put that gas in, that the air and the free space is always going to be at the top. So whichever position that patient's in, the one that's closest to the ceiling, the part of the body that's closest to the ceiling is the one that's where the air is going to be and that's your free space and that's your safe area. So when you first start doing it, you, you, you tend to put your instruments in like this and it's never as shallow, it's always steeper than you think when you're putting it in and then you're gonna end up hitting organs underneath that you don't wanna hit. So just remember that. when you, And you also have to adjust if the patient is tilted one way or the other that the free space is going to be moving according to that patient's position. So when you go in, you wanna make sure that you go a little bit shallower than you think. And you go in and you can feel if there's any resistance as you go in. So you go in gently and you go in paying attention and you can actually feel it as it's going through the trocar sheath. It gives your instruments, give you a lot of feedback. So you're going in, you're going shallow. And then once you're in the free space, then you can make the adjustments that you need to make to get to where you need to be. The surgeon on an open procedure is going to stand on the operative side of the patient where the site is. It's going to be just the opposite for laparoscopic. He's going to stand on the opposite side of where the operative site is because he's going to be, he or she, is going to be using the instruments across the patient's body to get to where they need to be. So a lap coli, he's going to be standing on the patient's left so he can get to the right. If he's doing a sigmoid, he's going to be standing on the patient's right so he can reach the left. And you as a first assistant, depending on what the procedure is, are going to be varying where you stand. So for the suction irrigator, when they're starting the procedure and you're checking that suction, you wanna prime it. First of all, you wanna make sure, especially if they've put one of these on, you wanna make sure that this is snapped onto the, no the base where it has the nozzles for irrigating and suction. So that you wanna make sure that's snapped on. And then once in a while, the one that comes from the manufacturer, the little nozzle on the end, is a little bit loose and then it sometimes during the case it pops off and then you get sprayed with fluid so make sure that that's tight too now if you want to prime it hopefully the circulator whoever's hooking it up has it hooked up to your fluid and to the suction it makes it a little bit easier if you're just pushing the irrigation to have it come through the tubing and the the motors they've turned it on then it flushes through pretty fast and it's easy to have it squirt out the side and either squirt the monitor or squirt whoever's standing across from you. So you have to watch it carefully to see it coming down the tube to know when to stop. Better than that is if they already have it hooked up to the suction, if you depress both nozzles at once, the suction and the irrigation, it will suck, it will irrigate through and prime itself and then just go right into the suction and you can hear as soon as it's sucking, you know that you've got it primed and then you're good.